September and autumn is definitely in the air. Join us today to find out what we're doing at the changing of the seasons. Welcome to English Country Life. My name's Fiona and together with my husband Hugh, we run a small holding homestead here in the UK. And what are we trying to do as homesteaders? Well, we're trying to save as much money as possible and be self-sufficient, self-supporting. In September, what are we doing? Well, the first thing is we are seed saving our vegetables so that next year we don't have to buy new seeds for our growing season. We've also had a package sent to us by our friend Martha over in Wales who breeds traditional pigs and raises them in a very traditional way. And we're packaging up all of that meat, making bacon, so we'll show you that. We'll also give you an update on the barn maintenance I've been doing because I've repaired the render now but I've been taking it a step further to make sure our barn is completely okay for this winter. And finally we are processing our excess tomatoes and we are making something which you may not have thought of before. So come and join us and we'll have a look at seed saving first. Although seeds can only seem like £2.50 for a packet, when you open that packet and see what you get, it really isn't very much. And when you want to grow a decent amount of veg, those prices can soon mount up. So today I'm going to show you three of the varieties of vegetables that we seed save and how we get a decent amount of seed for free. The first seed I'd like to talk about is parsnips. And as you can see here, parsnips will, given the opportunity, put up really big spikes of flowers. Now we've done a full video on this and I'll put a link at the end of this video. But parsnips are biennial. So if you leave them in the ground for a second year, they'll put all the energy they stored in their roots into these enormous great flower spikes that they'll put up in the air, maybe eight, nine foot tall. All you need to do is wait for the seeds to form in brown and then tie them in clumps and I hang them up over a garden shrug like this. The seeds will gradually drop and I'll give them a helping hand by giving them a shake each time I'm passing. But you will get a lot of seeds. This is from just three or four parsnip plants and they don't last. They'll only last maybe 18 months. So I share these with my friends and neighbours and I produce enough parsnip seed for all of us. One thing to take care of is look out for these little sort of nests you might find amongst the flowers. They are from parsnip moth and their caterpillars will emerge and consume the seeds if you let them. So if you find any like that, let them hatch out in the open. Don't include those bunches with your seed. Once I've done all of that, I will uproot the parsnips. And honestly, they're actually quite a hollow stem. They're not woody, they're not hard like a cabbage stalk so frankly if you break them up they will compost really really nicely if you don't have that much compost space let them dry and they will burn on your garden bonfire now a safety tip you've seen me handling these parsnips barehanded and that was foolish parsnips can contain an allergen a bit like giant hogweed that in bright sunlight will cause blistering, almost chemical burns on your skin. And that did happen to me after filming this video. It's the second time I've had it. And really, handle parsnips in gloves and long sleeves. Next up, we've got chilies. And these are my favorite variety of chilies. I've grown lots over the years, but I love these ones. These are a variety called Onivec, O-H-N-I-V-E-C. And as you can see, they produce a massive, chili and a lot of the time the only thing that we need to do to preserve these is to pick them give them a quick rinse pop them in freezer bags and then we'll use them from frozen and if you look at the size of them you know you do get an idea of why they're so easy to handle i don't even bother to defrost them if i'm going to use them in cooking once frozen hard literally all you need to do take one out of the bag and it will chop beautifully from frozen you can even return half of it to the bag if you don't need a whole one to gather the seeds what i tend to do is slit them vertically like that and you'll find that almost all of the seeds are gathered on pithy stuff at the side and mostly at the top where it comes from the stalk and if you withdraw that plug of pithy material you can very easily just kind of rub those seeds off 
into a receptacle. I put them on a plate. I don't like drying seeds on something like kitchen roll because I tend to find that the damp seeds will stick to anything papery. So actually something shiny and non-stick, put it on a south-facing windowsill, is the way that I find I get the best results from drying seeds. A third variety of seeds is tomatoes. And we need to spend a little bit of time talking about tomatoes because there are better ways to save these tomato seeds. And the problem with tomato seeds really is that sort of jelly, gelatinous material that surrounds the seeds that can make them go mouldy very easily. Now, this type is a San Marzano, and I like these. These are cooking tomatoes, and they have great big thick flesh. But something that I need to show you when you cut these up is you don't get the same kind of jelly-like material. So what I need to do is remove that central core, and that's where all the seeds again will adhere. And then we need to take the seeds from it. But have a look at how few seeds there are. And that's the problem with a lot of these cooking tomatoes. They've got brilliant thick sidewalls, but that allows much less space for the seeds. So what I will tend to do is take a number of these tomatoes and just using my fingers, I will strip what seeds there are. And there may only be a dozen or 20 in each tomato. And then obviously I will use those tomatoes for other things. And you'll see where a lot of these tomatoes end up later in this video. But you do need to be a bit patient because to gather a decent number of seeds from San Marzano or Roma tomatoes, you do have to open up quite a few tomatoes. With something like Moneymaker, it's much less so. And here's the tip. Put them in a jar and then just cover them scantily, just basically a thin covering of water, just enough to cover the seeds. And what I'll do then is I'll cover the jar with something that's a bit of air in, it's just a little bit of muslin or cheesecloth and an elastic band. And what I'm going to do is label the jar, and that's really important because I'll be doing more than one variety of tomatoes, and by the time this is finished, you won't tell which are what. But also then, I'm going to put that jar on a warm windowsill for three or four days, and all that jelly material breaks down in the water over that space of time. And after a few days, what I can do is just dump out the contents of that jar onto a sieve over the sink. Most of the jelly-like material you can see has already gone, but a quick blast from the tap will get rid of any that remains. And finally, again, I'll put them on a plate, nice shiny surface, and I'll spread them out. Because I found if you can get them almost so they're not touching, the chances of any mould build up again are much reduced because they will dry far more quickly. My final tip, if you want to get into seed saving, is buy this book. I'm going to put a link in the description in our Amazon store down below. But Back Garden Seed Saving by Sue Stickland. This is the book that I read to teach me about seed saving. And it does it plant by plant and shows you lots of different techniques for lots of types of seeds. Well worth a purchase. You remember last month that I was repairing this barn wall and the render has really come up very nicely. It's not perfect, but we've got to remember it's a barn. It's not a residential property. So I'm happy it's going to be good for at least another 10 years. But I've gone a step further than just doing the render, getting it painted, getting it sealed, getting it protected. So let me just show you that. I have actually finished the bitumous painting that we spoke about in last month's episode. So I've repaired the render, put the masonry paint on, and the last job was to put a black bitumous paint onto the timber lintels and the brickwork at the bottom. Now I didn't film it because quite frankly it was an incredibly hot day and I just wanted to get on with the job. But this is a beautiful gloss black now and it's going to provide a waterproof covering. Now I've extended the paint to just under the base of the render and that means that that water if it does hit this brickwork is not going to encroach behind the render and the masonry paint won't balloon out and we won't see the damage that we had before. Now I have got my little step ladder here and that's because my last job is to put a little bit of decoration that they had on, had on here and it was a set of ram's horns that was just outside the door to the shed and I absolutely loved it. It was Hugh's idea and I think it was a great idea.
We're making a really big effort to not eat any factory farm meat. We produce our own chicken, we take some wild game ourselves, and we do buy some wild venison. But we like pork, and we get our pork from The Decent Company, a wonderful farming operation run traditionally by Martha Roberts. And we've just got our winter supply in. Let's show you what we've done with it. I'm not normally one for an unboxing video, but I need to show you how this meat arrives. It comes with these cold packs on top, and the meat is beautifully chilled and ready for you to do what you want. You can put it straight in the freezer or portion it up. And that's what we tend to do. We like to adjust the portion sizes. One of these beautiful roasts, and they are sensational, is honestly enough for two meals for us. So I will cut the roast in half. We use our own Food Saver Vac Packer, which is a fantastic bit of kit, to repackage it and then freeze it. And we'll get two full Sunday roasts out of that. I must give you a word of warning there. Martha's sausages will ruin you for all other sausages. I have to package them in sixes, even though we only have two each with a meal, because I've got to have a cold sausage sandwich the following day. They are the most sensational of sausages, really. If you're going to put an order in, try them. You won't be disappointed. The next thing we do is we'll package up things like pork chops and we'll do this individually because that way then Fiona can strip the meat off and we have it in a Chinese dish, for example. And we even get whole pork loins from Martha for making our own bacon. I'm only cutting this in half because it's so big it won't fit in the fridge. So I'll cut them in half and I'll add our own bacon cube. We've got a full playlist for how to make your own bacon. It's ridiculous ridiculously simple. I'll put a link to the playlist at the end of this video. Once it's cured, what we'll do is we'll smoke it. And again, smoking your own bacon couldn't be simpler. This is a cold smoker. And then we put it in a cardboard box with the meat for 24 hours. There is nothing better than properly dry cured homemade bacon. And the great joy of working and eating from people like Martha is all the money is going into sustainable, high welfare farming. It's not being sort of creamed off by supermarkets, etc. So I really recommend if you can buy direct to do it. Our tomato crop this year has been exceptional. You wouldn't believe how many tomatoes we've actually got. And we've preserved them in all sorts of ways. And one of the things we make every single year is tomato powder. Now we do have a video just looking at how we've made tomato powder in the past. But this year we're doing it very slightly differently and it's based on a suggestion from one of you, one of our fantastic subscribers. So let us show you what we've done. If you're a regular viewer, you know that a lot of our recipes involve tomatoes. And as well as eating them fresh and in making prepared meals with them and in storing whole tomatoes, we also like to produce a tomato powder that we use reconstituted with some water in place of tomato puree. Now, what we do is remove any of the pithy parts of the tomato. And in previous years, all we've then done is slice the tomatoes up dry them and then powder those dried tomato slices and that works really well and I'll put a link to that video at the end but one of our viewers suggested a sort of more sophisticated way of doing it and we thought why not we'll try it this year so their suggestion was blitz the tomatoes when raw in a blender just whiz them up into a smooth thick paste okay we did that and then pour the paste onto dehydrator sheets and dry that rather like a fruit leather. Okay, let's give that a go. And this is what you get. We dried it till really, really crisp to make sure that it lasts. As you can see, it actually snaps. What we then chose to do is to break it up into big lumps, put it back into a clean, dried blender, and then reduce it to a powder. You could store it in the solid state. What I did find is I have to shake the blender a couple of times just to get the big lumps to fall down onto the blades. But once I've done that, as you can see here, we transferred it to an airtight jar to stop it absorbing any moisture from the atmosphere. And that'll be good for several years to make pizza sauces, bolognese, marinaras, etc. Well, that was September. It just scratches the surface of what we're doing, but I hope it gives you a flavour of how we live. If there's particular things that interest you, you'd like to see in these self-sufficient roundups of the year, please 
tell us in the comments the sort of stuff you'd like to see and we'll try and incorporate that in all the future episodes. There's some fascinating stuff coming up in October. If you'd like to see that video and everything else that we produce and you haven't subscribed to the channel, tap on subscribe down there. It's totally free. Hit the bell next to it. You'll hear every time we upload a new video. But for today, thanks for watching. Come back and see us soon. Take care.